Hello! The shops have finally reopened and I've been shopping! I really don't want to think about how long we'd been in lockdown, far too long, so I'm just going to push that aside and let's get into looking at some of the things that I have bought. So I have a few larger ticket items that I'm keeping until Christmas. The things that I have here aren't quite as expensive, but more things that I just wanted to pick up and a few impulse buys in there, so let me get the first item. It's not a very exciting one, but I've been looking to get a new one of these little painting knives or palette knife, and the one that I had before is this old thing. I think it is actually the same brand. It is an Art Spectrum one. So I was trying to open something and I've managed to permanently bend the edge of this. It's really annoying because I want a flat, smooth surface for various things. So I ended up just getting a replacement. I think this one's actually just slightly larger, but it's got that very thin metal. I have a few others which are a bit thicker and they're not as good. I like the ones that have the really pliable tip on them. And in this size particularly, this is really easy for mixing paints and scraping stuff off. So yes, I've been needing to get a replacement for quite a while and I managed to find this one at the art shop. The art shop is primarily where we went because they have the best stuff and I found all sorts of goodies in there. I could have spent so much more than I actually did. Ah, it's always really dangerous going in there <laughs> because of that. But the next thing I got are these two little guys. These are Art Spectrum Artist Gouache and they had gold and copper. I think I would like to get a silver as well, but they didn't have a silver at the time. So I've never used these before. I've never actually seen them in these little jars, but I just thought they were so cute and I love shimmery things. And that is very full. So I would be curious to see what that looks like on some paper. I'll just find some black paper. Here's this handy little Stonehenge pad that I had lying around and I usually just use this for testing out art supplies rather than doing paintings on it but it is a sample size as far as I remember. So I'll just grab a bit of this paint. It does have a layer of binder on the top but I'll just sort of dig into it and I'll paint some out. Okay that's lovely and gold. I'll add a bit of water just to see what happens. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. That's a lovely yellow gold too. That's a favorite color for me. And we'll take a look at the copper, which is in a very stubbornly typed lid. Oh, there we go. Okay, this one doesn't seem to have quite as much as the gold, unless the gold was upside down. But it seems like this one's really full and the copper has sunk a lot more to the bottom. There's a lot of binder in that by comparison. So I might just mix that one up a bit with a little mixing tool. I'll just stir that up. Oh yeah, that's really thick down the bottom there. Very gluggy. I think this one's been sitting there a while. I want to look at the color of it. It's amazing. Oh, it's very gluggy. That's going to take quite a long time to actually mix, I think. So I might just gently scrape that off. Just take some from the stick. That will be the easiest solution. Now let's have a look at this copper. Oh wow, that's gorgeous. They're really lovely and thick as well, so you get that massively opaque look, which I'm excited about because I have a couple of other ones and they're very translucent. But that is fantastic. I'm glad I got these two. I will definitely have to keep an eye out to see if I can find a silver one. And if they have any other metallic colours, I might have to pick those ones up. Oh, they're lovely. I just saw them, they were impulse, but... I was looking for something that had a metallic sheen to it, so I figured these might be quite useful. So this next thing I didn't actually show in my birthday haul, but Nick got me this for my birthday. It's a really cool light, and I don't know if you've seen it online. It's by a company called UniQ or something like that, and it's actually a filming light, so I'm actually thinking I might do a whole unboxing video because I started filming it and I just thought I'd give you a little preview of what it looks like so you can actually fit a phone in here and film straight down onto a table which is what I quite often do especially for time lapse and it's got a little light and I've been looking for something that I can travel with because I'm not always at my desk and I need some kind of bracket to hold my filming gear so I am going to show this I think in a video very soon but I just really like it it's such a great unit and something else turned up in the mail that I'd completely forgotten about. I'd ordered it ages and ages ago. 
off Amazon, but I think it came from China, and so it was in transit for a couple of months, I think, before it even got here. And I got this notification saying this parcel was arriving, and I just had no idea what it was. But then it arrived, and then I remembered what it was that I'd ordered. Have you ever seen those metal brush washing pots that oil painters often use? It's got a, a lid, and inside it has a brush washing area. I've wanted one for ages. I think they're made of stainless steel, and... They're never cheap. I've seen them in a few arts shops, but they're usually upwards of about $90, and I was going, oh, it's a bit much. And then I happened to see a pair of them on Amazon for sale, and they were about $30, and I went, oh, that's pretty cheap, so I might as well try them. Now, I was expecting something to come around this size, and this is just a <laughs> old muesli container that I've kept because it's a really nice one. When these turned up, check them out. They're tiny ones. <laughs> They're about half the size of what I was expecting, as we can see here. Look at it. But they are so adorable. I couldn't stop laughing at them because I honestly was expecting much larger containers. And then these two little mini ones showed up and I'm going, well, that's probably why they cost what they did. I wasn't actually disappointed because I actually like them a lot. And they're really nice quality. They've got... A rubber seal on there so that is pretty much watertight I think and inside it's got this little part which is where you can scrub your brushes in and scrape it on the side and then you can put your solution down the bottom so usually you could put your terps or your odorless mineral spirits or even linseed oil and you don't have to fill it all the way to the top and then you can just pop that in and maybe have it just so it's sitting above there so you can clean your brushes out. They are really intended for oil paints but you could use these for acrylics and watercolours because there's no reason that I could not put water in here. You could even take that part out and just use it as a water pot. But I really like that there's two of them and I think they are so super adorable so it wasn't what I was expecting but they actually turned out to be better, I think. And of course, we happened to go past Typo because it's in a particular shopping centre that we often go to and we always end up walking past it. I saw a couple of things. There were a few things on sale, but of course the two things I wanted were not on sale. First up is this draw book, which has 150 drawing prompts to spark the creative in you. And I think it's pretty much similar to one of those reckless journals or I think is it Mariah Elizabeth that has a book as well but I just thought I might grab this one and I might even do some of these in a video I'll just randomly pick some pages and I will draw the prompts so I thought that could be a fun one for making a video or two about and then I just took a fancy to this little box of fine liners I really don't need more fine liner pens but I always enjoy using them and this is a nice little thin box which I think would go quite well in my travel art bag so that's what I was kind of thinking I would use it for. For a minute there I didn't think there was any labeling on here as to what the numbers or the pens were going to be but that one says chisel so there's a chisel and a brush in here and I've already put these out of order which is so much fun but yes okay it's got the number there. Phew! <laughs> so I guess I will test one out this is the 0.7, as you can see it's a pretty standard fine liner, um, it's got a nice broad tip and yep, <laughs> does what a fine liner is supposed to do. They're quite flimsy, they don't feel quite as expensive as say the Sakura fine liners but I mean for travelling around I think this is quite a nice little pack so that's what I'm intending to use that for. So it starts at a 0.1, there's 0.2, 3, 4, 5, 7 a 1.0, a bullet, a chisel and a brush. So I actually quite like the look of this set and I imagine this will come in handy. Oh yes, and there was a keychain for a dollar which I couldn't resist buying. I don't know why I'm into Care Bears lately, but I really am. I'm reliving my childhood. Enjoying my life drama free. That's what I'm aiming for. I hate drama. So that's just to remind me to not get dramatic over things. <laughs> anyway, another store that I went to 
is one that's fairly close to the art shop. The shop is called Art Tree Creations and they do art workshops but they also have a small store that you can go into in person and they specialize in resin. If you remember I did that makeover a while ago on that box of coasters and I poured resin and things and I was really enjoying it so I decided I do want to try a few more resin projects and I ended up getting just a few little things to start with and what I really wanted to try is some UV resin. So I got this one here which is a 200 gram or milliliter bottle. They also had 60 mil which didn't really seem like enough and I think there's also a much larger one maybe 500 mil but that one was pretty expensive and they'd sold out anyway so I figured 200 mil is a good start. Resin is really expensive <laughs> and so I figured Probably just a few small projects would be a good idea to begin with. UV resin of course needs to cure with a UV light so they also had this tiny little torch which has got a UV light in it and it was quite cheap and it's a really solid metal one so I picked that up as well. There you go. You can see it's very hard to tell on here but that is really blue and I probably shouldn't put my fingers too much in front of it. <laughs> But there we go. And then I just picked up a few little molds. They have heaps of them there, but the bigger ones were quite expensive. So I just grabbed a few small ones to try out. These I think are for jewellery making, but I figured I can just, you know, try a few little molds here and put some glitter in an experiment with them. I also got a skull because I cannot resist that one. That's the one that caught my eye first and I went, oh, well, I've got to have the skull. And then I found one which is kangaroos. So, of course, I had to have that one as well. So look out for this video in the not too distant future, though I do have some other things planned. I have just this huge backlog of videos that I want to film and I keep not doing them. So I've said, you know, I want to do this, that and the other thing and it just never happens. It will happen eventually and I will definitely try it. Some of this resin as well. This bottle came with a separate applicator so I will put this in with the mold so I don't lose it because I'll be needing that applicator to pour the resin neatly into those small molds and maybe I can fit the flashlight thing in here as well. Perfect. Joanna Basford has just released a new book and of course I had to have it because I must collect them all. I think there is only one that I do not have and it was the storybook, what, Ivy and the Inky Butterfly? I don't know, that one just didn't really appeal to me because it's a bit childish, but I thought I'd go for this one, 30 Days of Creativity. I'm going to do a flip through and some of the activities probably in either my next video or one coming up really soon, so look out for that. Be sure to click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed and then I will do a proper review of this book. So yes, I just thought I'd give you a sneak peek of it because I only just picked this up yesterday. They were awaiting stock for quite a long time and I was at the store for something else and so I just popped into the bookshop just to see if they might have got it and sure enough it was there so I grabbed it. <laughs> and back at the art shop I also have a couple of other things that I picked up there. One of them is a gold line mixed media art journal. I have used one of these before. I've actually filled one entirely and you might remember this book. I decorated the cover and I have filled up the whole thing with little sketches and drawings and whatnot. Do check that video out if you haven't seen it. I really wanted to get this book for Inktober but of course the art shop was closed and I don't think they had the size at the time. When I looked they were completely out of stock so unfortunately I didn't get to do my Inktobers in this book but I figured I might as well grab one and use it at some point because I like the size it's 20 by 20 centimeters I think and it's a really great square book with paper that holds all sorts of media and does hold watercolor really well. I also picked up this pad of Art Spectrum toned assorted paper so it's actually got a few different colors in here and they do have them as separate pads but rather than buying four of them I figured I might as well just get one that has everything. I mean there's 40 sheets so I'm guessing 10 of each. It's 250 GSM paper and it's got your standard sort of cream color. It also has this really nice buff color. There's a gray and then there's also some black paper. So I just thought this would be a really great way to test out some of their toned papers and maybe also compare 
these papers to the other ones that I got by Fabriano and I do need to do another video on those using some different mediums once again that's on my to-do list and it got shunted down because of Inktober but I will remember to do it eventually <laughs> the good thing is I have not run out of ideas yet so I've got plenty more videos to make and the last thing that I got from the art shop they'd just got them in so I figured I might as well get a set the Derwent Chroma Flow pencils this is the largest set they have in a set of 24 and for some reason they've put it in a tin that's like the size of a 12 tin but it's deeper so it's got two layers and that's really unusual for Derwent to do that. Normally the 24 sets are in a single layer, you know, in a much wider tin. So <laughs> the shopkeepers were complaining a bit because their displays don't hold these boxes and that's so annoying for them. They've only just got new displays a couple of years ago as well and already they're obsolete. But I'm going to do a review on these separately and we'll check them out because I've I only seen a little bit about these pencils. I don't even really know what they are, so we will explore that together. But they were there, and I had not seen them anywhere else. They were really hard to get in Australia. So finally, they have come through, and I'm going to test these out in a future video very soon. So this is just a cheeky little art haul that I came up with celebrating the reopening of all the stores. I do have a few other things but I'm saving those till Christmas and I will no doubt accumulate a few more things by then. But we also of course had to spend some money on other totally non-essential items like clothes and shoes and ah, uh, uh, how dare I have to get those as well. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I just thought I would show you the few little bits and pieces that I bought lately and it's really great just to be getting out and doing stuff again and do stick around for my future videos I will probably be showing this book next I think and then I might even do the Derwent Chroma Flow in a video very soon as well just to get through those but yes <laughs> I have an ever growing list of things that I need to film and one day I will show you the basket that I have with all of the stuff I need to film and then we might actually go through that. That's probably going to be a next year thing. That's a future Becky problem right there. But in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and well out there and I hope that you are able to get to all of your lovely shops too. And if you're in Melbourne especially, I hope you're enjoying our newfound freedoms because I certainly am. I am so glad to be out of lockdown. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!